I'm Sam Mitchell, and this is Thundercast. On today's episode, we'll be talking to two student teachers here at Eastern Green. So over here, we got Ms. Kakamo, who is Ms. Finn's English student teacher. And we have Ms. Collins, who is our the 12th English student teacher. Hello, ladies. You guys doing good today? Yes. Yeah, thanks so much for having us, Sam. Of course. So can you tell me who or what inspired you to become a teacher? Yeah, I think for me, what inspired me to become a teacher was kind of just bringing representation within the school system um, and within the classroom. Um, being a black woman specifically, I think a lot of times uh, you don't really see representation in your class and just being able to give that to students was something that really inspired me and just really helping students believe in themselves. I want to work in urban education and so a lot of times, especially kids in my community, they don't believe that they can go anywhere far uh, with just their education. There's just life alone. So definitely just being inspiration to them and bringing them a sense of representation within the classroom. Thanks for sharing that, Ms. Collins. You know, this is such a tough question. I've always admired my teachers so much and just enjoyed going to school. I think I've always wanted to be a secondary teacher for sure. Kind of like Ms. Collins said, to support my students, you know, let them know their value middle and high school are just really tough years already and so I think students need an adult in their life to really support them and you know help them get through it and so that's definitely one of the reasons I wanted to be a teacher. Now how do you like help the student and like guarantee them and lead them in the right direction? Right so I think definitely being you know like a welcoming person so they feel comfortable talking to you and you know when they open up and communicate with you just listening and offering advice and guidance in the best way that you can. Yeah, I definitely agree. I feel like essentially it's hard, right? Because you can't really lead and guide every student. But I think the biggest thing is just being your authentic self and like showing the students and letting them know like, hey, I believe in you because I think a lot of times that's what students are looking for, to know that somebody believes in them that's going to support them inside and outside of the classroom and really just be an advocate for them. So I think a lot of times it is hard because, I mean, as a teacher, you essentially want to save all of them, go down the right path, right? But I think essentially the biggest thing is just like really just motivating your kids as much as you can and just letting them know like, hey, like you should believe in yourself. And so just really encourage them as much as they can um, and just knowing like wherever they go, you still support them regardless. No matter what, they may come back to you. You may hit a good long like friendship in the end or... Yeah. Like a good mm-hmm. bond. I'm looking forward to that, to have like at least one student be like, hey, Miss <laughs> Collins, you did this or that. I'm looking forward to this. Oh, yeah. At least yeah. one. Well, so now that makes her feel old. Yeah. <laughs> so out of curiosity, what classes do you have to take in order to become a teacher? Yeah, so for the edu- uh, education school at IU, there's like a set pretty much curriculum that you have to go through. Like those are set courses. Of course, every, um, so there's different content areas. So you have English, you have math and things like that. Um, Me and Ms. Kakamo, we're both English majors. So we take like different English classes and you get to choose on based on the classes that they have. But as far as education goes, like there are literally a set amount of classes. Um, So I know for me, I didn't start off in education when I first came to IU. I started a little later. So I had to, I'm in college, I'm a fifth year senior in college now, because if you literally don't follow the pathway from the beginning, you're going to be here a little bit longer. Uh, But we take like your uh, simple classroom management classes, reading and writing skills classes, like a lot of classes that's focuses on like lesson planning, helping your students with reading and writing skills. Um, you want to add one more? Yeah, like going off of that too, I think the most important classes to me were the ones where they actually like get you in the classroom to get field experience mm-hmm. or they call it service learning sometimes. Yeah. And you kind of work your way up. So you start out sometimes with just like a class period at a school. And then obviously now we're at the end with our student teaching mm-hmm. where we kind of assume the, the position of a teacher. Yeah. Sure. That makes sense. Now, how would you consider yourself like, how did you think you've evolved with your teaching? Oh, goodness. I've evolved so much. Like, <laughs> it's kind of crazy to think about just, you know, like just a year ago, I was sitting in a classroom in Brown County before COVID happened. And I was just anxiously sitting in the corner, like, just so terrified of these high school mm-hmm. students. And it's just crazy how much more confidence I've gained student teaching and 
Definitely. I feel much more prepared to be a teacher now. <laughs> yeah, I agree. I feel like I'm a more confident than I used to be because I know times like when we have to do lesson plans, I'll be like, um, I mean, I think this works. And we only <laughs> used to work with like at least one or two students when we go to our field experience. So being able to work with like 15 kids in the classroom is a lot because I'm like, it's different seeing one student and working in with them one on one and having to help 15 students and work with them. So I think a lot of confidence came with, like, being able to teach in front of the class and stuff like that. You know, I do feel a lot more prepared because in your classes, you kind of just like, okay, well, I don't really know, you know, what I'm going to do once I really get there. But actually to put into action has been a, a confidence booster just with speaking and overall. So, yeah. Yeah, you have to public speak at when you teach, so mm -hmm. that makes a lot yeah. of sense. So how did you hear about Eastern Green? So when you start your process to become a student teacher, you have to fill out like an application, I think that's what it is. I can't remember what it's called, but it's like an application where you choose what schools you wanted to go to. So before this, I had an urban placement because I said before I wanted to teach urban ed education, and I was supposed to do that in Chicago, but because of COVID, of course, that got canceled. So how I heard about Easter Green is the, uh, I want to call, her, I'm, whoever is ahead of like the School of Ed who does like the student teaching placement, she sent me over different schools to look into because honestly, like I didn't know what to do since I wasn't going to Chicago anymore. Um, and she told me about Easter Green. And so I looked the school up and I just looked on the webpage and that's how I found out about it because I'm not from Indiana and all I really know was the schools in Bloomington so when she sent me it that was like my first really introduction to Easter Green. When you got here what is one thing you could say you were surprised about? You know I read these questions earlier today and I've been really struggling to answer that one. Miss Collins does anything come to your yeah. mind? Um, I think for me was to see how small the school was um, oh. because so my graduating class it was like 400 of us. So to come to a school with like, it was really small. It was literally an upstairs and downstairs. Like we had so many different hallways. Our gymnasium was like, a. It was a, we had a whole separate gymnasium. Like it was so big. So to just come to this school and see how small it was, I was like, oh wow. Like I've never really been in a smaller school. So that was surprising to see how you literally walk upstairs, walk downstairs and everything's there. So yeah. You know, I'm going to go off of that. I agree. My graduating class was like 600. I'm from Fort Wayne, Indiana, and so it was definitely just really cool to see that, you know, smaller town feel. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, our passing periods in my high school were like eight minutes because you'd have to like run across the school right, to get yeah. to your class. So that was a good one for sure. Let me ask, do you like the fact that it's smaller or do you think if you would have went like to a smaller school, you would have been more successful? Actually, so I do like it, right? Because you really get to have, as far as like from a teacher aspect, you get to have more individual time with your students and kind of like one-on-one. -on -one. Whereas I'm a little bit nervous how it's going to be being in a bigger class of like 30 students because how do I get to interact with all of them? So I, I like the one-on-one -on -one aspect. And I think it helps a, a lot of students, um, especially like in a lot of times when you have bigger classes of 30 plus students, you can't really recognize who is really struggling in the classroom, right? And every time they don't really have, feel like they have a voice. And I feel like with the smaller classes, you see everyone use their voice, which is really good. I um, wish I like definitely love and advocate for kids to have their voice in the classroom. So, yeah. I could see that. Now, can you just describe me like, I know you're with uh, Miss Finn, who's a junior teacher, and you're with Miss Leibacher. How they helped you? Oh, my goodness. Mrs. Finn has helped me more than I could have ever imagined. So she's most likely retiring this year. So just the amount of resources she's given me and books, you know, she's been teaching for quite some time now. So just endless amounts of advice. I feel like I can turn to her with anything. What's, what's a big piece of advice she's given you? She has encouraged me so much, uh, you know, different organizations to become like a part of. And there's a writing program convention that she's encouraged me to be a part of. And She's just really, really hammered the point of making connections in the community and with other teachers around the world and, you know, how positive of a thing that can be, for sure. Yeah, I would say the same. Ms. Leibacher is very, very encouraging. Literally, she's like, what is it that I can do to help you? And I think that's really good to have because I'm the type of person, I don't really ask for help. I'm just like, I got it. I'll do it. I'm okay. And just to have her support, you know, and listening to her different experiences throughout, like, the different schools that she's been to is really just helpful to see kind of, like, how, you know, 
I think the biggest thing that she has told me was just like, you know, you'll find your place. Like when you're at that school, you'll know it's for you. And I think that's the uh, like that's really been like a good reminder to hear because I'm like I'm nervous with the next school I go to and actually teaching. I'm just like, well, how is it going to be? And she was like, you will know when you find your place. And just having that encouragement and knowing like I am doing well in the things. And like, you know, she's telling me there's areas that like I'm really doing well in that a lot of novice teachers really don't catch on within their first year of student teaching so to hear that is really like encouraging because a lot of times I can be like man am I really supposed to be doing this like I don't know if this is even for me and her encouraging words really does keep me going so yeah Yeah, well it makes you feel like you're doing based on a student's perspective my perspective you're doing a good job because I'm <laughs> thank you Sam Aww. definitely appreciate that because sometimes I'm like okay well yeah. you know I hope so I, I think my hour likes you <laughs> yeah thank you you are welcome so now this is me I think you can all I don't know if you know but Miss Collins you know I've learned slower so mm-hmm. how do you both help a student who's like struggling who has a disability or an IEP or yeah I think the first thing that comes to my mind is definitely communication is key in, you know, so many situations, but especially this situation. I think, you know, like I said earlier, an important part of being a teacher is being open to talking and working with students and being a welcoming and for them to come up to you and be comfortable sharing stuff with you and starting those conversations yourself to like, what can I do for you? Like, you know, and working with them to figure out the best strategy that would help them the most in the end. That's what comes to my mind. I feel like, you know, when we were taking our classes, like we didn't really get a lot of information on really how to work with kids with like IEPs and different things like that. Um, So I think the biggest thing for me is just really connecting with your resource teacher. So I know Ms. Reagan, all the kids go to her class, you know, and definitely talking to her and getting her different like uh, perspectives and supports on what the kids need. For me, like, I didn't know when I first came in. So, like, you know, getting all, like, okay, these students, they need more time reading or they need more time on their work. So really connecting with the other teachers that knows more about you guys than we do really helps me because a lot of times I'll probably be like, okay, well, I think everybody's good when really, you know, students do need more time and things like that. So just really connecting with all the different teachers to get what's the best support for you all uh, I think helps best. And what, my out of curiosity, in your opinion, what support have they asked you for? And if you could share some. Yeah, I think the biggest thing, so I know a lot of students, they will either ask me for more time on assignments, or I think another thing, too, is if you remember, Sam, we did our memoir assignment. Um, a lot of students uh, share some really deep things about the things that they uh, experience within their uh, lives. And, you know, they ask me, like, hey, is it okay if I don't present it to the whole class? For me, telling them, like, you know, you just shared this major thing that happened to your life, and I don't want it to trigger any emotions that you it still may have um and so them you know being able you know to ask me like hey is it okay if I don't present of course because it's a hard topic that you're talking about I'm not going to take away a you know a grade or anything because you don't want to present right but just knowing that hey I support you enough to know like hey if you, this is really uh you know affecting you in any type of way I don't want those to trigger any um, bad emotions for you and I definitely don't want you to feel like you have to put your life in front of the whole class especially when it's something that's uh, really, you know, um, triggering or really emotional to you. So those are something like students ask me either more time or just, hey, it's okay if I don't do this and this is why and, you know, just working together to figure those things out. Now, how do you like teach but the stuff that the teachers are going to teach but you make it your own? Um, So I guess so right now me and Ms. Livebacker are, are doing a lot of like tag teaming with teaching uh, and a lot of times I will see, I will watch her model a class and then I'll come in and do it and so whenever she uh, like models like a first period I like take notes of kind of like what she's doing and things like that but then I always remember like you know I'm not going to be able to do it how she did so what I try to do is like put my little twist on it right and I you know for me is understanding that I am going to make mistakes because she's been doing this a little bit longer so I try to take notes but if I miss it, I'm just like, you know what? Well, what do I do know to, to recognize whether the students are, you know, understanding? So I either say, can you put a thumbs up, thumbs down, thumbs in the middle? Like, you know, finding out those cues that help me. So I try to, like, put in my different things because sometimes I'll just be like, I'm definitely not going to do it like her. But this is how best, you know, I kind of built that uh, connection with the students on getting to see how they're learning things. So, yeah. Gotcha. 
what about for you? Yeah, definitely the first thing that came to mind was trial and error. Mm -hmm. Definitely. I love the whole thumbs up, thumbs down. Uh, To kind of put my own twist on the classroom every day, we always start with a question of the day, you know, quotes of the day, gif of the day. Those things just build community, you know, get the students engaged and ready to go. Mm -hmm. (laughs) That's not a bad idea. What has student teaching taught you? Just as a person. Student teaching has <laughs> taught me just seriously <laughs> so much. It's yeah. like, you know, what's that phrase? You're trying to drink from a fire hose. That's how I feel. Mm-hmm. You know, I think because like I said, you know, in the school of ed, we didn't really get that much time in the classroom before yeah. this. You know, my right. confidence was really lacking. You know, you just got to go in head first, give it all you've got. And I think I've learned so much about myself, just, you know, my strengths in teaching, maybe where I need to work and I've learned a lot about English, too. Mm-hmm. Like, we're reading Into the Wild by John Krakauer. I had never read that until just recently. So, you know, even materials and stuff like that, I'm still learning. Yeah, um, I think for me, it definitely helped me, like, realize, like, wow, you're so much harder on yourself than you really <laughs> yes. try to perceive yes. to be. Um, I think I, like, I personally like things to be perfect or to be good. So, like, when I'm getting evaluations or anything, I'm just like – oh, man, like, I definitely could have did better on that, you know. So I think for me, the biggest takeaway is just, like, you know, understanding that, like, hey, you're going to make mistakes, and that's okay. But I think something I took away, too, is just, like, all the different things that I learned from my students. I feel like a lot of times, you know, you want to make those connections with your students and have different conversations about them. But I think a lot of times, especially when I creating uh, assignments or, like, the memoir unit that we did, like, it was really for me to get to know you know, my students better and get to know more about them. And just, you know, you never really know what people are going through, which is like something I really took away um, and why it's so important that we always support our students in any way we can um, because, you know, you just never know. And so I've definitely learned a lot from you guys, and I, you know, definitely want to use that with my other students that I get to teach, like, you know, being able to incorporate those things. And you guys also give me feedback on different assignments that I gave you so just to hear like you know okay we thought that was a little a lot and then I'm like okay well you know thinking about that and you know restructuring things as I get into like my actual own class so sure and I think you're saying I just based on the way you are talking you both have a bright futures with teaching thank you so much thank you you're welcome greatly appreciate it so what would you say be the most rewarding and most difficult thing about being a student teacher for me, the most, I'll start with the most difficult. Yeah. You know, I just keep forgetting we're still in college. We're about to graduate. I think that's definitely a difficult part. Like all of our friends, you know, they're out doing their own thing. And we've got this adult schedule, if you will. I don't feel like quite an adult yet. And I tell my students that every day and they just look at me like, what? <laughs> but that's definitely difficult. Getting ready for the real world. Job applications are starting to come out and yeah. stuff like that. But it is like one of the most rewarding things I've ever done. Just as Miss Collins has said many times, you just build so many connections with the staff and your students. And it's just so awesome being that support for so many people. Can you tell me actually um, who, who, why don't you name some of those connections you made actually? Well, yeah. So Miss Collins, you know, the other student teachers in the building have been a really like, fun to work with. I only know people by their first name, I know. so I'm just, like, trying to think of the last. Um, Mrs. Leibacher has been amazing. You know, so many teachers in the building, uh, Principal Kirkendall, they've all just been so wonderful and so welcoming as we've been working here. Yeah, I definitely agree. Um, Mr. Black, he comes into the class all the time, and he was like, you're still here. They didn't um, run you away. And I'm like, no, they yeah. didn't. <laughs> um, but I would say one of the difficult things for me um, is really like, uh, I guess in a sense, like classroom management and kind of like discipline in a sense with classroom management. Because I'm just like, okay, you know, like what if if a student does say something or do something, right? How am I supposed to respond to that? How are you supposed to respond is what you're asking 24-7. Yeah. Oh my gosh, I I get that. But believe me, I get that too. Sometimes I'm like, uh. Yeah, yeah, I'm like, (laughs) how am I supposed to respond to that? Or I'm just like, okay, well, because I'm also in the position like, okay, well, I'm a student teacher, and Ms. Leibacher is the actual teacher. So, like, do I discipline? Do I give disciplinary actions? Yeah. Like, what does that – so that's kind of been difficult because I'm just like, um, well, you know, 
I don't know. So that's been a difficult one for me. It's kind of like figure that out because I'm like, I don't know if I'm like stepping out of my position of being a student teacher by trying to, you know, put if the needed, hammer down. Right, put yeah. the hammer down. But then I'm like, well, you know, I don't know. But I think the most rewarded thing, I don't know, just being able to teach, honestly, has been nice. Like just being able to really get into the motion of what – teaching would look like um, because when you're sitting in your classes every day you're just like okay I'm learning all these things but what is this like in the classroom like it's so much more different when you're learning something on paper and you're actually doing it so I think this experience overall has been very rewarding um, so yeah uh, sweet I think I mean I'm not I wanted to be a teacher a while back ago but mm-hmm. I throw after I found this it kind of changed yeah. Yeah. So. you're doing really good I think thank this you. is this is for you definitely. yeah this is awesome thank you so much what would be like your ideal grade to teach and why? Uh, so like I'll go ahead. Go elementary, f- middle, high, or? Yeah. So people's first impression of me is elementary school. I'll tell you right now, I, I don't think I could. I don't have the patience to deal with little kids all day. <laughs> oh, me too. I feel you. <laughs> and so, you know, I haven't had much experience working with middle schoolers. So, you know, it's been amazing working with 11th graders. Don't get me wrong, but I think I would be way more cut out for like ninth, 10th grade teacher for sure. Mm-hmm. Like Miss Collins said, I just haven't quite figured out how to like, you know, put the hammer down. I think Sam's what you refer to it as. I definitely struggle with discipline and, and maybe that's because it's not technically like our classrooms, you know, at this point. But yeah, ninth or 10th grade, I think would be just yeah. perfect for me. I think that too, like because they're 12th, like 12th and 11th grade, it's like you guys are kind of practically grown adults <laughs> so yeah. it's like we're close in age but we're not so yeah I definitely oh, yeah. feel that uh, I think for me I really want to teach middle school like that's something I'm looking forward to I like high school but I feel like ever since like I've been in the education um, school at IU all we've been doing is high school so I've had a little experience with ninth and 10th graders and 11 and 12 so I want to go to um, middle school because I feel like middle school is like the prime time where kids are really trying to find who they are and trying to figure out, like, who am I? What's my identity? Who I want to be? I mean, I kind of want to experience that a little bit. Every time I tell people, like, I want to teach middle school, they're kind of looking at me like, what is wrong with you? They're crazy. (laughs) But I feel like, you know, I want to see that a little bit of that craziness. Um, I like high school. I think, you know, if I just get have my middle school experience, I will know for sure, like, okay, Middle school or high school. Uh, once I get that middle school experience, I think oh, I'm yeah. Gonna, yeah. For sure, for sure. Now, if you're middle school, like, if you want to learn some advice more, my mom is a teacher. Okay, at the cool. Grade, yeah, so sweet. Yeah. If you want to get some advice, mm-hmm. yeah, can, I'll Definitely. connect you to her. <laughs> Sounds good. Yes, connections. <laughs> so. Just out of curiosity, for fun, what do you enjoy to do outside of teaching? For me, so I love to sleep. That is my (laughs) biggest thing. I feel I love to go to sleep. I'm very boring. Like, I don't really do much. So I love sleeping. I love binge watching TV, um, Netflix, and my favorite TV shows. Um, Something that's like, I always tell people, like, give them a warner because they're just like, oh, no, not a warner, a warning because they're like, ew, why do you watch this? But I love, like, (laughs) pimple poppings and things like that, like watching those those satisfaction videos. I love it. So I literally could, like, watch those on YouTube all day. And it helps me, like, fall asleep and everything. That's, like, what I like to do. I'm very just chill, like to sleep, watch TV, and um, I love to try new food. Oh, sorry, what did you say? I said homegirl, basically. Yeah, pretty much. I am a homebody. Oh, yeah. Well, I definitely am, too. But just this last week, my students have just been giving me a hard time because my boyfriend and I, we go hiking all the time. And so that's the first thing that comes to my head is hiking. I love hiking, going out, you know, getting some exercise in a fun way, Mm -hmm. making coffee, baking, you know. Typical old lady stuff. Yeah, all the kids stuff. And I'm just like, let me go to sleep. If I could get a nap, that's all I need. I'm too hyper to sleep. (laughs) I can sleep all day, honestly. What what do you like to bake? Like cupcakes, pies, or? Yeah, really anything. I love experimenting. You know, I feel like I've finally mastered. I've been trying since middle school to (laughs) freaking master chocolate chip cookies. Oh, wow. I finally found the perfect recipe. See, I can't even bake brownies, and I follow the directions on the box. Oh, so, my goodness. Uh, baking is not my thing. Well, hit me up if you need any advice. <laughs> yeah, we will. Uh, we'll definitely do that. So, now this is the final question. What type of, like, what does a student teacher mean to you? What, Im- like, impact do you want to leave in this building? Ooh, that's a good question. That is. Let me go first. I don't 
Yeah, yeah. Thing a bit. All right. Here we go. We're, we're getting into my sentimental side. It doesn't take much. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll start with the first question. So being a student teacher to me, you know, this is going to sound so sappy. It's like the end of a chapter, but like. You, you want to move on to new, something new. Yeah, yeah. It's like, you know, I'm moving on to the sequel of my life. <laughs> you throw in a little English teacher transition there. <laughs> but yeah, for real, like we've gone through all this schooling. We're about to graduate college and it, like you said, Sam, it's like a new journey is about to start, but we're also closing up on a journey. And so it's very bittersweet. And as far as leaving an impact on the building, I guess, you know, I I hope if I've done anything is to let my students know that, like, I value them for who they are. And like, they can always turn to me and their teachers in general. I've tried to really, you know, let them know that they can always talk, turn to their teachers and building staff if they need anything and just to be I try to be just a good person like I hope that they've valued that and I hope that they can take that with them with <laughs> I'm not doing a good job answering this no, question that was great that was I think that's really good that was perfect actually yeah. thanks Sam <laughs> I think what does a student teacher mean to me I I mean honestly I feel like I'm always going to be a student teacher because I feel like as a student oh, yeah. you're learning all the time you're a big kid um, at heart yeah you're yes. a big kid at heart literally like even when I become a teacher teacher like I'm still going to be learning so many uh different things especially like you know I'm you're going to be going to your first year of teaching there's so much to learn so much skills and things that you can get for teachers who've been doing this for like 20 plus years so I feel like essentially you're going to always be a student teacher because there's always something for you to learn. I feel like with education, there's new things always coming, right? And how you taught someone, you know, t- 10 years ago is going to be a little bit different. You got to always, you know, learn new things to keep up with the new generations and the new students. So, and I definitely agree. I feel like it's a new, it's a another journey in the life. And I feel like this chapter is closing, right? It's kind of bittersweet, but I think it was a start to something that was going to be really good. Um, and so, yeah. And I think the impact, I think if anything, the biggest impact for me is just really, I would like my students to like take away of like, why it's so important to have representation in the classroom and that your voice matters. I think uh, for me, Through my time here, you know, we talked about the Holocaust. We've done, you know, extensive things about Black History Month. And I think for me, it's just really important to, like, why representation matters. Why it's so important to learn about different people and different things, right? Because I think a lot of times as people, we can, uh, we, we know about ourselves and we may know about our group and our communities. But when you get to learn about other different communities and other people, um, it's so ex- uh, inspiring. And just to have um, a sense of knowledge and wisdom about, about different people, right? Everyone goes through something different and everyone has a different story. And just to hear their stories is amazing. So, representation and just knowing that your voice matters and others matter is really something I hope I leave uh, my impact here with my students. All right. I think that's good because I think both of your ideas like match together. And I think Mm -hmm. at the end of the day, you want to like, just make sure you were remembered here. So Mm -hmm. by someone. Yeah. Let's hope. (laughs) Yeah. Even if it's just one. Let's hope. (laughs) One can change a whole person. One person can change a whole news. Well, that'll be all for us. Do you have anything you'd like to say before we head out of here? Uh, well, I want to say thank you. Oh, yes, I was so you. excited to do this, and <laughs> I'm just so excited. Yes. Yeah, I mean, thank you so much, Sam, for even wanting to interview us. Yeah. I think this was amazing. You're yeah. doing really great. I hear about your podcast all the time, so it was, like, good yes. to actually be in action with you sure. and you doing it. So this is really yep. great. Um, shout out to my students, Mrs. Yes. Finn. Shout out to Ms. Lightbacker, all of my students. Um, you guys are the best. I know. I know. We will be leaving here soon. Oh, my so, goodness. You know, Cheers. I mean, just we'll, thank you to Eastern we'll Green you. for even, we'll you know. We'll miss you. Thank you so much. We'll miss you, too. Thank yeah. you. Of course. <laughs> Thanks for joining us for this episode of Thundercast. Please tune in for our next episode coming very soon. If you have any suggestions or comments, please email us at thundercast at egreen.k12.in.us. You can subscribe and hear every episode of Thundercast on iTunes, Google Play Music, and Podbean. All content in this podcast is property of Eastern Green School Corporation and may not be used without express print permission or rights reserved.